Welcome back to Scorecard Series. It's Tim and Jacko, and we are back today to talk about having fun with hanging and all the training and performance benefits that come with it. So today we're going to look at a load of hanging variations and how we can start to manipulate um, our training environment and using that to have some fun with the training but get some massive performance benefits out of it as well. The thing that we get stuck in too often with our training is very simple one-dimensional movements in a sagittal plane. When we're hanging, we're thinking about pull-ups, we're thinking about pulling straight up, and we're not exploring any other options and giving some options to the shoulder to move in some different ways. Those things are really important when it comes to human flag training on muscle-ups. We need to develop end range and outer range strength, and if we to stay in that safe position, we don't get the opportunity to do that. So lots of you have rigs in your gym. We've got one here. We've got a great opportunity, partly because not many people really know how to use them effectively but we can start to think about different hanging variations how we can move around the rig have some fun with it solve movement problems set little challenges for ourselves but the whole time we're doing that we're starting to build strength particularly in hanging single arm movements which are going to transfer really well into your training and just build those bomb proof shoulders that we know we can then put to use for some more fun in our more advanced calisthenics movements so we're going to start with the basics and we're going to build it up from there and we're going to look at that active hang again but what we're going to do is, as well as looking at this position of just moving up and down, this shoulder has massive 360 degrees range of motion. And what we're going to do is start to build up to be able to explore strength and stability and control in some of these positions that's outside of potentially our comfort zone or where we've currently been working. So we're going to build this up from the basics right from the beginning of proper hanging technique, which means you can then start to scale it as we show you the progressions where anybody can jump on board if you can hang from a bar. My little boy can hang from a bar, so you can. Get That's started with me. that too. That's not him. I'm his big boy. <laughs> right, jump up, Jacko. So we're going to start just differentiating between an active hang and a dead hang. So dead hang is when Jacko lets his body go slack. We're just hanging on joint tissue, some collective tissue, no real muscle tension in there. We've just got some traction on the joint. The active position comes, he's going to draw these shoulder blades down, pulling the shoulders away from the ears. You can see his head lifts up, but the elbows don't bend. So it's all of it is being driven by these retractors in the shoulder. We're pulling the shoulder blades back and down, starting to create that upward lift. Our active hang position is going to be the foundation from a lot of pulling movements. Now that's great and we could go into pull-ups, but what we really want to do is start to challenge this so we can build some more strength. So the challenge now for Jacko is can he hold active hang and then can he start to then shift weight onto a single arm active hang? That's our next progression. You can see for the first time, if you're a bit unsure, just let one kind of finger come off, start to gently shift over. And what I want him to do is be able to hold that active position and then transfer back onto the bar. If you are training for your human flag, that single arm active hang is the top arm of your human flag. So it's an absolutely real key movement in terms of developing that strength and competency. So we can see he's doing a really nice job there. Hang, swings across, holds the active position. That scapula is set down, shoulders locked into the socket, creating loads of tension. And he's also thinking about what's happened down here with the rest of the chain as well. Linking the shoulder with the hip starts to enable us to transfer forces through the chain really nicely and that is such an important part of calisthenics. Jacko is now going to go single arm and he's going to drop into a dead hang so we'll show you what that looks like. So he transfers himself across into the active position and if he goes dead hang now, lets the tension go, you see the ear slumps down towards the shoulder, the body's naturally going to want to unwind into this position. The job now is can he crank that shoulder back down, wind himself back up into the facing forwards and then he pulls the shoulder blade back into a stable position so it can create that active shape. Again, the whole time we're, get, we're um, training grip strength as well, which is doing a really good job for our rotator cuff and shoulder stability. And we're working really nice progressive um, transition from different positions, challenging the shoulder in different shapes. So let's look at some troubleshooting because this isn't that easy. Hanging on to the bar with just one arm in an active position is not necessarily uh, that easy for people. So we'll give you some options in how to train that and also looking for what we don't want to happen and, and how we're going to combat that. Because ultimately, if you're going to save your life and be a hero one day, you might need to hold on to the bar or a rock I've got you. by one arm. <laughs> so Tim's going to go into his active position. And then as he transfers across, what sometimes might happen is he starts to let that grip go. And then all of a sudden, he loses that active position. And then you see that unwind. It's also going to have an effect on his grip. He needs to keep that active position where he's constantly trying to pull that shoulder blade down and keep that separation between his ear and his shoulder. So if we are finding that difficult, one of the first things we can look at is 
not completely taking away the hand on the other side. So rather than taking his hand completely off, Tim can start to loosen a finger and maybe he can hold with three fingers, two fingers or one finger. So you can build up progressively the strength on the opposite side by taking off one sort of finger at a time, which is a nice sort of easy progressive approach that you, you can use straight away. The other option we have is using um, a resistance band. So the band is going to take a little bit of load off of you and give you a little bit of support whilst you work on the mechanics of um, holding yourself and staying active on that one arm whilst the other side isn't doing anything at all. So the other thing with the band that's nice is it gives him, keeps him honest in terms of his body line of shape. So that rib cage down, tummy nice and tight, bum on. So he keeps that tight. He's then able to hold and take that arm off. And then with the little bit of support from the band, he's able to work on those mechanics of holding that single arm in an active position. And then what he can also do is give himself the opportunity to go out of that active position and come back into it just as we demonstrated before. But with a little bit of help from the band, it might mean that A, Rather than being able to just do it once, this gives you enough capacity to build up sort of three or four transitions, so you're getting a bit more capacity in the locker for some of these shoulder stabilizers that are holding you in that active position. And those guys want to work under higher amounts of sort of volume, so having a more capacity in your training rather than making it a max strength type exercise is going to be beneficial. So that's all of the science and the technical stuff out of the way. Now it's about time to put it into practice and start to challenge your grip and your shoulder in lots of different positions. Um, so we're going to look at like problem solving. So Tim's going to start on the bar here. And if you've got a, a rig in your gym, you'll then got to like, how can you get yourself over to another part of the rig where you've got no distinct like actual um, movement that you're going to go through. You've just got to explore that and try and figure out how you're going to get to a different part, changing all different ranges of motion, challenging grip in different positions and having some fun whilst you do it. So that's a little bit about how to have fun with hanging. There is a lot of fun to be had, but there's a ton of value for the shoulders as well. Creating stability in different positions. The shoulder, remember, has so much range of movement. It's important that we can start to generate different strengths in different positions, creating stability as we challenge it in those ranges of movement. And that's gonna mean that we get a really stable shoulder and it's linked in with the kinetic chain. And that means that your calisthenics training is gonna accelerate purely because your system is better connected together and you can transfer forces and do it safely. Yeah, it's a great way for you to build up some strength in a fun and, and almost playful way as you're getting outside of your comfort zone, challenging new different positions. And then as part of a warm-up, it works beautifully to get the shoulder and grip fired up before any of your pushing sessions. Pulling sessions. If you're going to work into some different positions in calisthenics, like your human flags and your muscle-ups, training this out of range strength, like we said right at the top of this video, is such an important part. And it's one of the, of the foundation parts of being able to do those more advanced movements that a lot of people lack, and it stunts their progression. So building this into your warm-up is just loads of sixes in one big box of putting a ton of benefit in your training. So until next week, class dismissed.